So I'm recording this video after playing a very nice game with black pieces which started with the Italian game and then I responded with the Paris defense. This is what we call the Italian game and this pawn structure when your dark squad bishop is on f8 and the knight is already on f6 is what we call the Paris defense. So what I'm going to do in today's video is first of all I'm going to give you the analysis of the game that I just finished playing and then I'm going to include the live footage of that game towards the end or later in the video so stay tuned and be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one right so the game just ended and now it's time to do some analysis so if i scroll down oh 96 percent accuracy this is impressive guys so i played this game with 96 percent accuracy this is impressive and i guess this one in accuracy is that pawn move that i made somewhere in the middle game which was pawn to a5 let's see if i'm right yep so immediately i played this move i noticed it was inaccurate because i just hanged my pawn on c6 i forgot about this pawn but anyways even if queen takes c6 happened i was just going to play rook b8 yep so let me scroll up so after queen takes c6, I was going to play rook b8, targeting the b2 pawn, just like I said, and then put my light squared bishop on b7 with ideas of capturing this knight and then take back my pawn. I don't know, just my thoughts. But the thing is, yep, I just forgot about this pawn. My idea was to go bishop a6 to activate my bishop. But anyways, that was the only inaccuracy that I made. So going back in the opening stage, which is the main area of my meet. Quite all right, my opponent started with the Italian opening or the Italian game, whatever. So instead of playing the Gyoko piano or the two knights defense, I decided to play the Paris defense, which I covered in my yesterday's video. And you guys need to watch that. In fact, it is an introductory video to my free course which is on my patreon page and also on my website that i dedicated to my patrons and it's literally free you guys of course with a small commitment fee attached for research so after d6 the next move you want to play is bishop e7 in most cases and not knight to f6 unless you are prepared for tactics because in some lines white may play knight g5 if you play knight f6 but even after knight g5 you have pawn to d5 turning this into some kind of the two knights defense fence, right lever line, you know what I mean. So the safest line is to go bishop e7 or start with h6 but bishop e7 seems to be more safe. So my opponent here just castled short after I played pawn to d6. I was expecting to see pawn to d4 by the way. After pawn to d4 I was just going to take. That's the main move. And the position that you must be familiar with is this position where you have doubled pawns along the c file and one pawn on d6 like this. And then you just develop your bishop and castle short. Say, what do we do with these three pawns on the center? In the near future, if pawn to e5 comes, we'll just play d5 in most cases. And of course, by that time, white would have played pawn to f4. So this is the kind of pawn structure you are going to see in the middle game. And what about this knight? So our knight will sit on e5 given a chance or like this and it is our dark squared bishop that is supposed to sit on f6 so these are some of the middle game plans and then don't forget to push pawn to f5 and play bishop a6 provided you don't hang your c6 pawn like i did in this game so that's the plan if you want to know more details about the paris defense you can simply watch my free course which i have also linked in the comment section by the way but anyways after bishop c4 and d6 my opponent castled short instead of playing d4 and then i played bishop e7 stopping knight g5 right and also preparing for knight to f6 then castle short simple stuff and this is when my opponent played d4 and of course if i wanted i could have played knight to f6 entering into this end game like this is very much okay you guys where you take on d8 with your knight why with your knight because you want to keep an eye on your f7 pawn for example after knight takes e5 you don't have to worry about this because your knight is defending that pawn and on the next move you just take the e4 pawn so this is dead equal and i'm sure white players don't like this so you won't see them going for this queen trade instead after knight to f6 the other move that you are going to see is pawn to d5 after which you are supposed to go knight b8 yes because your knight will be developed on d7 i mean your queen's knight 
And then later on, you may put it on G6 like this, depending on your test. Say after knight C3, then you go castle short, securing your king first. And then if they play H3, maybe trying to stop this move. This is when you go knight BD7. Anyway, and this knight BD7 moves goes together with A5. For example, after knight BD7, you want to put your knight on C5 in some lines, right? Say bishop E3, now you go B6, A5, and knight C5. A5 stops pawn to b4 by the way. Another strategy is to go rook e8 first and then relocate your queen's knight to the king side. And one more strategy is to go pawn to c6 which is my favorite by the way because if white takes you take back with your b pawn and still control these two squares that I have highlighted and from here your queen will sit on c7 and Always remember to play a5 whenever you have a chance so that you can free up your bishop and h6 will come, knight h7, etc. So all of these are strategies that I'm just showing you guys. But instead of playing knight to f6 back on move 5, I mean after white played d4, I decided to take. Yep, that's the simplest way to play the Paris defense. Because after knight takes, I'm prepared to double up my pawns and go into the lines that I just showed you, you guys. After knight takes d4, this is when I played knight to f6, knowing there's no pawn to e5 because I can just take bingo. And so white took, which I was expecting to see, and I took back with my b pawn. And again, there's no e5. I'm just going to be up a pawn, you guys. So white played knight c3, a move that even masters play. You can check the masters database. And then I just cast it short because what else can I do? And then white played bishop e3. And when you think about it, I literally have no important moves. I can't develop my pieces like normally. And so this is when you start thinking about that plan which I showed you. Knight d7, bishop f6, and then put your knight on e5. If point to a4, you can change your strategy. Instead of putting your knight on e5, you can put it elsewhere. Even knight b6 makes a lot of sense and then you start developing everything. I mean, your bishop is on f6 by this time. So instead of going knight d7 and knight e5, I decided to do it this way. Knight g4, attacking this bishop, right? Because at worst, I can just take that bishop and I'll remain with the bishop pair. So white played queen f3 and then I played bishop f6. My typical plan because I want my knight to sit on e5 which happened in the game after h3 and then after queen e2 is when I took white's bishop on c4 and after queen takes here I should have played something like pawn to c5 because white was attacking my c6 pawn but for some reason I don't know the devil that came into my mind. I played a5 which was not really bad according to stockfish by the way because Position is almost equal, but this was just an inaccuracy. It wasn't a blunder. It wasn't a mistake. It was an inaccuracy. There's a difference, you guys, you need to understand, but I don't know the difference. <laughs> anyway, so after queen takes c6, I was going to play rook b8 to getting this pawn and say rook a b1 defending this pawn. I was just going to play bishop d7 now attacking this pawn indirectly and say queen a4 because what else can white do? This is when I was going to play something like pawn to c5 defending my a5 pawn and also just ensuring that I'm safe. Yes, I'm down a pawn, but even in the two knights defense main line, we are always down a pawn. Another opening where we are always down a pawn is the Scotch Gambit, even the Danish, the Smith Mora. So I was just going to take that pawn disadvantage as a clear and sacrifice and continue putting all my pawns and my pieces on the most active squares. So that was the only inaccuracy that I made. A5, I should have waited, maybe play pawn to c5, knowing that white can't play knight d5 because I mean, I can just take on b2, right? And this pawn to c5 move was going to be followed by pawn to c6, then defend my d6 pawn and maybe just get rid of it in the near future by pushing it to d5. So that's what I was supposed to do. But anyways, I ended up winning this game cleanly, I mean, like this, my opponent played rook f e1, which was an inaccuracy. And then I fixed my mistake. Then this was just a free pawn. I just took it. Though I didn't see this move, bishop takes c5. But something told me this was a mistake because I still had some attack going on. Bishop e6 came with an attack, you can see. And I was going to win a free piece here, I think, after taking the free knight. For example, say after queen d3, I was just going to go bishop takes c3. And after queen takes c3, this is when I was going to take the bishop. So 
Nevertheless, I was still going to be up a piece, whatever White was going to do. But after bishop e6, he just played knight d5. Entering into this pin, which is not advisable in chess, never put your queen in the line of a pin or vice versa. So I just played pawn to c6 and this is where the game ended. After a few moves, I played bishop a5 in this position and my opponent resigned. So you guys be sure to get my e5 defense course which is currently free or coming with a small commitment fee. So seize the opportunity to enroll now before the price goes up. These are courses that other people sell to you at crazy prices like 50 bucks, 30 bucks. But I'm just giving this tar free to you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for your support and be sure to follow me on Patreon, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and my second channel, which is Casper Chess Clips, where I post some of the most interesting clips from my original videos. That's if you just want to be entertained and learn some quick traps. So my second channel, once again, is Casper Chess Clips. The link is in the comment section down below as well. Now it's time to watch the game in silence.